Hey guys, I'm Rich from NeoWin. Today we're unboxing the Lenovo Yoga C630. So this is a Windows 10 convertible that uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon 850 processor. And um, so this label here that says it's a tablet running Android, that's uh, not accurate at all. It does, however, have a 13.3 inch full HD display. Um, so it's actually pretty cool, right? Because... We've seen five Snapdragon PCs so far. If you're not familiar with Windows on ARM, it's actually pretty cool because this is Windows running on an entirely new architecture. Traditionally, it's run on Intel processors. Uh, now we're seeing Qualcomm PCs, and those Intel apps are being run through emulation. So this has presented some problems so far. And the first PCs that we got were run off the Snapdragon 835 mobile PC platform. So that was like a version of the Snapdragon 835 that you saw in phones um, with some changes. It was modified a little bit to make it better for PCs. We saw three of those. One of them was the HP NVX2, one was the Asus Novago, and then later on Lenovo showed up with the Mix 630, which I still have. And um, these PCs were frankly awful. And, uh, but it was a starting point for Windows on ARM. The Snapdragon 850 came later on, and then we had the, um, the Samsung Galaxy Book 2, which I reviewed already, and we also have the Yoga C630. So this is based off the Snapdragon 845. So th they called this the uh, uh, Snapdragon 850 mobile compute platform. And it's based off the 845. Uh, the clock speed of the CPUs are a little higher, and um, it's got some other improvements that are, again, more for PCs. So let's get this open. Now, the thing that I love about this is that it's actually a convertible laptop, right? So I have, like I said, I have the Mix 630 here. This is a tablet with an attachable keyboard, similar to a Surface Pro or something. And the Galaxy Book 2 has that same form factor. So this is a real 13-inch laptop that we have here. So we have this in here, and... We have a little note in there to, to check for driver updates. So this is a, a pretty traditional uh, yoga form factor that we have here. We have speakers on the sides, full keyboard, full clickable trackpad, a pretty big trackpad too. All right, let's see if it's going to boot up or if I'm going to need to plug it into power. So while that's charging a bit, let's take a look at what else is in the box. We have a USB Type-C charger, and this is going to be a 45-watt power brick, uh, which is what came with the um, with the Mix 630 as well. Here's our power cable. Let's see, there's some paperwork here. Um, it ships with Windows 10 Home in S mode, even though there's a little uh, confusion there. Uh, SIM pin, because this does have cellular. That's one of the benefits of a Snapdragon PC. Uh, no pen. Although it kind of suggests that there would be a pen. But there is no pen in the box. So I'm going to check with some pens and, and see if it actually has uh, pen support. It should. It's probably optional. Because remember, this is a C630. So it's it's meant to be more in the mid-range. In fact, another thing that's really cool about this is that it costs $699 or $599 with a two-year contract. So that's actually pretty inexpensive for, for these Snapdragon PCs. One of the big complaints about it... Um, the original ones was that they cost around $1,000, which was ridiculous. Okay, so this is booting up. Now, like I said, that, that price was ridiculous. Um, the PCs were not that good. Um, I'm, I'm talking about the Snapdragon 835 ones. And they came with about 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, most of them. So... $1,000 is outrageous. Even with an Intel processor, that kind of RAM and storage is just too low to pay for that price. So really, these things should have been priced around $500, and that, that's what we're starting to see here, and that's that's pretty exciting to me. The Snapdragon 850 is much better than the Snapdragon 835 in terms of performance. Even those emulated apps like Chrome, um, it ships in S mode. Uh, switching out of S mode is free. So you will be able to run any apps that you want. Okay, so a little bit of a disclaimer there while this is setting up. Not exactly any apps that you want. Um, this can run any apps that are compiled natively for ARM, obviously. Um, that includes UWP apps mainly because uh, when you compile a UWP app, you're pretty much just checking a box that says x86, x64, and ARM. There's now an ARM64 SDK, so there's that's another checkbox. And you could compile uh, Win32 apps as, as 
ARM64 now, so we might see more apps running natively. As far as emulation goes, though, you can run x86 apps only, not x64. So if you have an app that's only available for 64-bit Intel machines, that will not run on this. Uh, you need a 32-bit Intel app or a native ARM app. Um, so, so a couple examples of that would be like Adobe Photoshop Elements. It's in the Windows Store, X64 only. You're not going to be able to run it on this machine. Um, Qualcomm is working with companies to get their apps to run natively on ARM because performance is a big issue. Even though it's so much better with the 850 than it was with the 835, um, Google, the 835 was pretty much unusable even, even with some native apps, and it's a lot better with 850 it's at least usable so i can run chrome on this and it's going to be all right i i've done it um on the galaxy book 2 and you know it's okay uh, running natively it'll be a lot better it's going to fix a lot of those performance improvements so another thing you might be asking at your at, at this point is why would i buy this thing um, it's not an unreasonable question because obviously all Windows apps do run natively on Intel processors. Um, it's a time-tested thing. Why, why would I take a chance on this new on this new architecture when it's it's still in its in its infancy um, as far as Windows goes? Because obviously most of our mobile phones run on Qualcomm processors. Um, so there's a couple answers to that question. One is battery life. Uh, Qualcomm, Snapdragon, well, most ARM processors, in fact, use uh, what's called big little architecture. So that with that, you have, um, this is an octa-core chipset. It has four powerful cores, four less powerful cores that are known as efficient cores. So if you're doing something that requires power, it's going to use those powerful cores. If you're not doing something that requires power, so say it's syncing background notifications, um, that's going to use those those less powerful cords. So it's just kind of sipping the battery life rather than just sucking down battery life um, when it's doing things that don't require it. Okay, and that's why it has those additional cords. Um, it also means that, th that the PC is always on. So when I wake this from sleep, it instantly wakes up. Something you'll notice with Intel PCs is that when you try to wake it up, by the way, it is taking forever to set up for some reason, but I'm guessing it's because of the Snapdragon. But um, with Intel PCs, you'll wake it up, you'll hit maybe the space bar to wake it up, keyboard backlight comes on, and you sit and you wait, the screen is still off, and then you hit the power button because you think maybe it's not waking up. And then the screen wakes up a split second before you hit the power button, and then you put it back to sleep, and then you got to turn it back on. Like, this is real stuff that happens with Intel PCs. It just can't wake up quickly. So this wakes up uh, fast, more like your phone would. Okay. The other, th the other benefit of Snapdragon PCs is cellular. Um, we have cellular Intel PCs, but the thing is, those come at a premium. Those are always optional. They always cost a couple hundred dollars. Well, shouldn't say a couple hundred dollars more. Maybe 150 if you're lucky, a hundred dollars more. Um, with uh, Snapdragon processors, the 4G LTE modem is built into the chipset, so this comes standard now. Welcome to the best Windows ever. It says. Um, we take a look at what comes. It should be uh, Windows 10 version 1803. Um, yeah which is exactly what you'd expect. If we go into uh, settings, we'll see that it, it has the Snapdragon 850. Um, and there it is, uh, 2.96 gigahertz, uh, 8 gigs of RAM. By the way, that's a huge part of this machine is that it has 8 gigs of RAM. Um, all the other ones that came out have 4 gigs of RAM, so this is going to be big. Um, another thing about the Galaxy Book 2, though, is that you have that Super AMOLED display. So there are some really... Uh, premium components to some of these. Um, so yeah, there should be pen support. Um, I'll just have to find a pen that works. Uh, so that's fine. Um, let's check for updates. Hopefully we could get a 1809, although it's been kind of problematic. But um, on the Microsoft Windows support page, it listed um, it listed the Snapdragon 850 as, as being an 1809 chip. But uh, Microsoft did have some problems with 1809, so everything is still pretty much an 1803. You can see 1809 is not even showing up in Windows Update, uh, which is fine. So you see uh, uh, speakers that are going to fire right up at you, which is great. Um, it's a convertible. So this is the, the form factor that I prefer in a PC. So... Because, I mean, especially it's Qualcomm, it's cellular, 
you might want to use this as a tablet, and you can if you want. So that's what's really cool. You could use it uh, in tent mode, just set it up and watch a movie, uh, presentation mode like that. And that that's the, the flexibility that you get with a convertible. So I'm not a huge fan of the other form factor that we've been seeing, which is the, the tablet with the attachable keyboard, um, just because really th this is – this is what I'd rather use um, for work because you get a real keyboard. It's most of the time, it's just a laptop. You're not making any compromises in the form factor um, versus getting a regular clamshell. With a tablet and, and an attachable keyboard, you are making compromises, right? And I'm going to show you the Mix 630. So this is obviously the, the attachable keyboard does, does have its issues. Um, it's a, it's a reason I'm not a big fan of the Surface Pro either, just because this is a nice keyboard, though, by the way. It's just that, that floppy keyboard makes it hard to type on your lap. Um, and then it's basically, I would look at it as if you want a tablet first, you get a tablet with an attachable keyboard. If you want a laptop first that can turn into a tablet, you get a convertible. And really just the convertible is more uh, my speed. So... There's not much else to show on here because really it's the form factor. It's the chipset. Um, there's no Lenovo bloatware. In fact, if you launch Lenovo Vantage, which is typically what you would use to um, to install new driver updates and firmware, um, it's probably, if it's anything like the Mix 630, it's going to tell you just to go online. Um, let's see. And, and download drivers. Yeah. Open your file explorer. Uh, navigate to PDF to find find your user guide need help go to lenovo.com slash support so all your drivers updates should come through windows updates because <laughs> this is actually a uwp app too which is kind of funny or well i shouldn't say it's uwp app. it's at least a windows store app um but yeah so it's just there and it doesn't really do anything which is kind of a bummer because i do like lenovo's vantage app um there's not much else here so you're not going to find a uh, mcafee antivirus on here which is fantastic um for some reason, there's two Netflix icons in the. Uh, uh, that's a that's a, a Windows 10 fault right there. Um, you know, as we know, um, Microsoft loads up PCs with their own bloatware now with Candy Crush Saga and stuff no one wants. So, so what this is actually doing, I'm pretty sure, is that it's a, it it came with Netflix pre-installed, and then there's a. a an icon there for to push it to the store to get Netflix. One is from the Lenovo and one is from uh, Windows 10, which is kind of funny to me, at least. I'm sure you're not laughing over there, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, not much Verizon Connection Manager. Um, you should be able to pop any SIM card in here that you want. There is a nano SIM slot over here. Uh, there should be an eSIM as well. And then we have USB Type-C. That's for, for power. It, sh it should be USB 3.1 Gen 1. Um, and then we have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Another USB Type-C port power button. Uh, no physical volume rocker, which I prefer on convertible, but that's okay. The USB ports that we're seeing are going to be USB 3.1 Gen 1, 5 gigabits per second. Uh, you might see Gen 2 in some places, but you're probably not going to see Thunderbolt because that is that is really kind of an Intel thing. There's no reason that um, OEMs can't build it into the device, but it's not integrated into the chipset. Uh, so that's about it for now. Um, really, what you've got here is just a regular laptop, a convertible laptop form factor, full keyboard, full trackpad, speakers, and, um, you know, touchscreen, pen input. So it just has a, a Qualcomm Snapdragon 850 instead. Um, eight gigs of RAM, which means that you can do real things with it. That was the one thing that – that was my biggest complaint with the with the Galaxy Book 2 was that it had four gigs of RAM. Uh, the performance wasn't bad, but once you started opening up more tabs, like you can feel four gigs of RAM these days. So I'm pretty excited to, to review this and, and see how it, do, how it does. I'm going to Qualcomm Snapdragon Technology Summit, and um, I'm going to bring this with me. Um, I've heard uh, stories of people that like to say that, oh, I, I went to this and all I brought with me was my Snapdragon PC, and I didn't even bring a charger, and, and it was fine. So I'm going to bring a charger, but uh, we're going to see how, how it goes and if I can get by without using the charger. But that's it. I'll have a review on this in about a month. And um, that's I'm going to try to use this as, uh, as my only laptop. Anyway, guys, I'm Rich from Neowin. Have a great night.